who are completely independent, like the ethics commissioner. So that model exists already, and it, it could, they could be looked at uh, more closely to have a more independent model. So what, what you're saying is that you, you need that independent funding mechanism to avoid uh, the having to go through the government to get the funding to actually do your job effectively. And th thank you for your comments on that. Thanks. That is your time, uh, Mr. Julian. We're now going to Mr. Genuis, please, for five. Th thank you very much, Chair. Ms. Maynard, it seems that from your opening comments that you were a bit of a Cassandra here. You, you prophesied correctly that there would be significant problems around information, that the pandemic uh, would not be an excuse. The government was warned uh, and they didn't listen. I think that's an important testimony, not only what happened with the Arrive Scam scandal, uh, but also that people were warned, flags were raised in advance, and there was uh, there was no uh, appropriate uh, caution shown. What are the responsibilities of ministers and of PCO, the Prime Minister's Department, when it comes to information being maintained and information being available? The um, under the Act of the Information, the Access to Information Act, uh, it's the uh, Secretariat, uh, Treasury Board Secretariat, who's responsible to administer the Act. They are uh, the, the department that are responsible to send uh, um, notification or, or policies or explanation of how to apply the uh, the Act and making sure the administration is done properly. But within the each department, the minister is responsible for um, the administration of its own uh, responses to the Access to Information Act and, and, and making sure that the operation is working, that they have the sufficient resources, they have sufficient um, uh, people working at it. And they're also responsible to send guidance and directions. If a leader believes in access and believes in transparency, the rest of the department will work towards that. Um, so what we see is some departments, it's working really well. They have great leadership, uh, great uh, uh, guidance. Others, I, I was worried, and it's what happened during the pandemic. People working from home, pe people working on their phone, on their on the, their cellular, uh, their the um, uh, on Teams, and not taking notes, not recording what's what was happening. Uh, so this is uh, again, I think it, it is a leadership issue. Okay, so you, you expect leadership from ministers on that, as well as leadership from uh, the, the Treasury Board. And to be clear, that includes not only on responding to requests for information, uh, but ensuring that the obligation to, to maintain records so that they can be requested, uh, that, that those, are, those are part of the obligations as well. Exactly. Right now, there is no legislative duty to document. There is a policy issued by Treasury Board with respect to documenting records, keeping records, and there's also uh, management inform uh, information management policies. Um, but this has to be uh, coming down from the ministers and the different departments, and T TBS is definitely responsible for administering the act. Without this okay, and, 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 clear, and clearly that's not happening. Thank you for, for that. Uh, it has been alleged, there have been articles about this, uh, that, that Mindone deleted email records. Uh, can you confirm, first of all, that deleting email records, uh, as, as described in the story, would be a violation uh, of the law? And uh, secondly, do you, do you have any uh, response or reflections to these very serious allegations against one of the uh, principal players in the uh, Arrive Can issue? I cannot comment on that specific uh, situation, but I can tell you the Act currently have under Section 67.1 the prohibition of destroying, altering, falsifying, and concealing records with the intent of denying a right of access. So during an investigation and we find that the documents have been destroyed and I have sufficient evidence to believe that it was intentional uh, in order to not have that information accessible, uh, I can refer the, the, the file to the Attorney uh, General for further uh, investigation under the criminal code. Uh, but it's not something that I can pursue when, it's, when we pass the, the administrative investigation into a criminal investigation, uh, okay. my, I'm limited. 
So just to understand that process that you just described, uh, that 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 might you can't comment on the specifics around the allegations against Mindone, but but if you had these concerns, you would you would refer them to the Attorney General, uh, who who uh, who is uh, sits in the Liberal cabinet, Mr. Mr. Verani. Uh, you could could you refer them directly to the RCMP? And if you were making such a referral, would the public know that you had made that referral, or would it uh, would it be a, a private referral? So currently, you're right, the only uh, available, uh, I can only refer to the Attorney General. Unfortunately, I cannot refer directly to the RCMP. It is something that I submitted to the Parliament uh, with, or to TBS for an amendment, for possible amendments of the, of the Act that I should be able to refer to the appropriate authorities. Um, and but right now it's the attorney general, and it is not something that it's private. I couldn't. It, this is something that we know we have done six times in the last uh, forty years of our existence. So it's not something that happens very often because you have to believe that there was an intention in order to remove uh, access to the information. Thank you. Very yeah, much. I, I would just comment parenthetically that that, that please. Oh, Mr. Baines. Never mind. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, to um, our commissioner for joining us today. Um, I, I know you said that some departments are following the guidelines they're doing, uh, they're documenting and they're following the act uh, as it's supposed to. Some are good, some are bad. Um, is your, can you, can your office make that determination whether documents are missing or never existed when it comes to CBSA in this case? During an investigation, we are definitely looking at whether documents that uh, were supposed to exist have been uh, destroyed or are missing in terms of uh, if, if something is not there because it was not created in the first place, it's a little bit more difficult. But sometimes we find email exchange or there's like somebody will make an, an allegation that a really big decision was made, but for some reason there is no records of it. And that's something that we can definitely comment on. Uh, but the act currently applies to record that already exists. So if uh, we find, again, that there is evidence that something has been destroyed or altered or, um, you know, uh, changed or somebody telling somebody else to do that during an investigation, we can definitely uh, look at uh, Section 61, 67.1 in terms of whether it was intentional or criminal. And, and are things leading that way that there was something there and it's not there now without telling me? The, we are during what, our what investigation. We will ask people. We will look at emails. We will look at attachment that are not there. We will, you know, and we also um, welcome uh, submissions by uh, the complainant. Sometimes they know things that we need to know as well so that we can pursue our investigation appropriately. So, uh, has anyone from CBSA reached out to your office for guidance in making sure they comply with the Access to Information Act? It's very difficult to provide advice specifically to invest to, to, to department on cases because we may be called to investigate those cases. So we usually try not to intervene uh, with uh, the way it managed. But what we do is provide guidance in advance, like I did in 2020, about making sure things are recorded, making sure that people I, I, are managing. I know, I know I'm asking specifically about CBSA here. So have they, has anybody from there reached out? I'm not aware of. Okay, and CBSA then can you maybe walk us through what the current state of CBSA specifically, a tip process is? Are they the one of the? Well, it appears that they may not. They may be one of the bad departments here. Um, what challenges are they having, if any? Well, currently CBSA is the the institution that has the most complaints with my office. Has received the most complaints with my office also is the institution that has the most active investigation going on. And uh, they are having uh, issues responding on time to requests, and they also have a lot of uh, files with respect to refusal and the uh, application of exemptions to files. So, and, and you, you're not aware if they're doing anything to address these challenges at all? They're just, right now, there's an investigation going on, and ultimately at some point maybe recommendations will come down and they'll have to do, yes. do something but are you aware that they're doing anything to address the challenges that with with 
being a leader in the most having the most complaints, etc. I'm I can just tell you that they are working with us on the investigations that we have opened with them. Okay, and ultimately, like we, this is a parliamentary committee and not a court of law. Eventually, we'll get around to the business of making recommendations. Do you have any for the committee at this time to consider? I know you've walked us through a few things, but um, I, I know you mentioned um, that that there need to be legislative changes, maybe introduced. Like, w what can we do uh, to improve? every department and make sure that these departments are good at uh, uh, are are good actors rather than um, failing on some of their duties well the duty to document should be legislative uh, so something that we can have an actual authority to um, to look at whether things should have been documented or not uh, but right now it's not legislated and we uh, we I would recommend as well that you look at the submissions made to the uh, by the ethi Committee on recommendations for the uh, for the act, cabinet confidence. Which I should have the authority to review those so that we know that there are actual cabinet confidence and not something that's been uh, used for documents that are not meeting the test. Um, I should have uh, an independent funding mechanism so I can actually increase the number of investigation and be on more timely on those investigations. Um, there's yeah, there's there's lots that can be done. That is our time, Mr. Baines, but uh, Ms. Maynard, if you have a full list, uh, I welcome you to send them to the clerk and we'll distribute to committee. Uh, Mrs. Vignola for two and a half, please. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chair. In the case, I was listening closely to you and I understood that if you thought that things had been uh, removed, had been erased uh, in the course of the study that we were doing, that we are doing now, this situation would have to be reported to the Minister of Justice. Have I understood you correctly? It, it would have to have been proven that it was intentional because, so, you know, people do a, a a bit of house cleaning in their documents. And so if somebody house cleans their documents, uh, and uh, but they did so unwittingly and take away information, it wouldn't be a criminal act, or, or would it? You say you would have to have proof. Yes. And do you have any proof in this current situation? But in view of the fact that we are undertaking this investigation right now, I really can't make any specific comment. And you're saying also that the CBSA was the sector, is the sector, uh, where you have received the most complaints. Is that normal, given the public safety aspect that is attached uh, to the CBSA, or does that go beyond it, beyond what is normal? Well, uh, we are looking. Uh, but we have undertaken uh, a systemic uh, uh, examination of uh, what is going on in the CBSA, and we do so because there's been a 100% increase in the number of complaints. Uh, they have access to information like the Immigration Department does, but it is not related to what we are talking about today. It's due to the fact that they have access to information uh, as, uh, that is shared with Immigration Canada. How can I ask you this question? How can I formulate it? Has the CBSA enough staff and to do what is necessary? Is that something that causes the complaints, or is it something elsewhere? Well, they have to have a team and, and uh, that can meet the need. They have a good team, but the increase, there's increased requests. There are increased requests every year. So it's moved up to 10,000 10, additional applications and requests that 